What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. And last week I reviewed the new Tamron 35 to 150 F2 to 2.8 lens for your Sony E-mount system. And I mentioned that this was not my like final review, it was my initial review and that I was gonna do a that final review after like a few months of using the lens. But uh, like any other tube doucher, uh, YouTube douchebag, I'm gonna just go ahead and just do the review now, okay? Whether or not it is going to last the next, you know, two, three, four, five, six years, or whether or not it's going to just fail on me, you know, autofocus stops working or something in the next six months, I'm gonna just have to, you just never know, you know? And it all, all depends on your usage, where you go with it, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, there's always warranty. There's always uh, gear insurance. And I think as a professional, that's something that you all should have. My overall impression of this lens is it's like the ultimate, like versatile lens for any shooter, especially solo shooters. I had the opportunity to help a friend of mine, also a wedding planner, to film some BTS and create a promo for his business on a recent like pretty epic wedding uh, that he had organized, coordinated, planned, designed, all that stuff. And here is a quick look at that. And in that video, I used the Tamron 35-150 f2, f2.8 on my Sony A7S III handheld and on gimbal. And the super wides, I pretty much just took my other Sony A7S III, the one I'm using to film this video right now. I put this 14 millimeter G Master lens on and I just did handheld shooting at 14 millimeter with active stabe to do simple push-ins, to do simple movements with the 14 millimeter lens. There's not much like, it looks almost gimbal-like. I didn't even use warp stabilizer on this footage. I thought it looked fine. I think when I finalize the promo video, I probably will put some warp just in case, but to me, it looks fantastic, which makes being a solo shooter these days for events, documentaries, whatever, it's become so easy now for us, especially with lenses with this range. You know, you have F2 at 35 and F2.8 at 150 is just ridiculously creamy with the compression of the telephoto lens. And of course, if you have something like a wide angle 14 or 17 millimeter Tamron or something like that, if you don't have the budget, you could just easily just have different types of shots, wide, tights, all with just two, two cameras or just two lenses. And, you know, some of you are saying, well, the 35 millimeter isn't that wide. My opinion on my shoots, that super wide stuff, 16 to 24 mil are just really good for like a few shots here and there. A couple of epic low angle or just trying to showcase the venue, these couple of epic shots. But the rest of the time, it's on a 35 millimeter, you know, more, more for me anyway, 50 to 85 millimeter. But the fact that I have this, like it's ridiculous. And the image quality, I noted in my review, others have noted on their reviews um, on this two doucher realm. Everyone has said the image quality looks great and I agree with them. Um, it's fantastic. It's great. I mean, all the way through the range. I can't complain as a videographer with a lens of this caliber of this focal range and aperture. Uh, I mean, how can you? 
And some of you, I've noticed, complain that, oh, the lens is too heavy, it's too heavy. Like, come on, guys. Are you serious? Like, go to the gym. I mean, it's not that bad, okay? And all, I actually, matter of fact, the fact that it is a little bit hefty, it makes it a lot better for handheld shooting because you can just kind of rest it on your hand like this. Keep your elbows tight and you get some solid handheld shots with minimal movement, especially with the camera like the A7S III with IBIS and Active Stabe, whatever the look you're going for. And guys, come on. Cinema rigs, FX6, FX9 is way heavier than this kit right here. Like you could literally just have this and God, like you could do everything and anything you need to ever do, you know, as a running gun documentary filmmaker, okay? Um, yes, it is expensive, 1800 bucks, but I'll be honest with you, you gotta invest in yourself. Like, I think, I don't think I would have made a film this event for my buddy um, better if I didn't have this lens with me. The fact that I was able to go from 35 to 150 in a blink of a second to get multiple different types of shots, multiple different uh, focal ranges, you know, you want to showcase some of the some of the background 35 you want to fo really focus on him and what he's doing and his 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 emotions his um reactions you could go to 150 you know and the fact that it bounces on a gimbal is just completely game changing and again some of you are saying it's too heavy but if you pair this with like a dj rs2 which is a super light gimbal it is actually probably lighter than like a Crane 2S with a lighter lens, such as like a 50 mil. So I think especially so after filming a full wedding and then filming this event solo by myself, and I just realized what I was able to do, what I was able to get with this lens as a solo shooter, running gun, quickly switching off to something wider, like a 16 mil when I had to. Um, it's just game changing. Like it's, it's. Uh, I'm so glad we live in a time like this when we have this type of gear at our disposal because when I first started, like these weren't even like close to being options. You know what I mean? Like I think in this day and age, if you are looking into becoming a videographer, and you're complaining about the gear that is available to you, you know, whether it be this lens being too big and too expensive or the A7 IV not having like full frame APS-C uh, or full frame 4K60, uh, you are a loser. You know what I mean? Like, loser. Like there is no camera brand model there's there's nothing at this point the only thing that limits your capabilities in this field right now is yourself it is not the gear because at any budget you can get a camera from any brand and have everything you need to be a fantastic creator. And it is really all up to you. You don't have money for 14 millimeter GM. There is 17 millimeter Tamron. There is freaking Rokinen that works just as fine for wide angle. Like, can anyone tell other than the most nitpicky of nitpicky pixel peeping Dustin Abbott type of reviewers? No, can't really tell. And then when you have something like this and all you can complain about is that it's heavy and that it goes from 2 to 2.8 and that's a problem? Like you... Like it's better than... F, I'd rather do F2 to 2.8 than like a F4, you know? Or a freaking like... 
24 to 70, just f2.8, and it stops at 70, like, sometimes 70 is just doesn't do the job. It doesn't have that compression. It's not tight enough. That's why you have 100 millimeter. You have 135, you have 150. If you have any reservations about getting this Tamron lens, and look, I bought this with my own money. Like, Tamron doesn't even know who I am. They probably don't give a crap about who I am. They'd probably rather send this lens to, I don't know, Jason Vong or somebody with more subscribers than my trash channel. You should get this lens. If you have any doubts, if you just want, in my opinion, the most versatile lens available for your email system right now, this is a Tamron right here. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, lighten up. Lighten up like your emotions and your personality and stuff like that, not necessarily like your lens. In this case, get your weight up, go to the gym, drink a protein shake, you know, change those chopstick arms to something a little bit thicker and handle this gangster lens right here. Peace. Thank you.